Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my Design Patterns video tutorial. Today, we are going to cover the abstract factory pattern, as well as review the factory pattern in a completely different way than I have in any other previous tutorial, because I've received a bunch of questions about it. So let's get into it. So what exactly is the abstract factory pattern? It is like a factory, but everything is encapsulated. The method that orders the object, the factories that build the object, the final objects, and the final objects contain objects that use the strategy pattern. And if you don't remember, there's a link above to the strategy pattern, but I'm going to review it later on in the tutorial. The strategy pattern just uses what is called composition, or in other words, its class fields are actually objects themselves. But either way, if you don't get that, let's move on. So what can you do with an abstract factory? It allows you to create families of related objects without specifying a concrete class, which is extremely important because it provides you a ton of flexibility. You want to use them whenever you want to have many objects that can be added or changed dynamically during runtime. And with an abstract factory, you can model anything you can imagine and have those objects easily interact with numerous other objects through common interfaces. The only bad thing about an abstract factory is it can get very complicated. But hopefully in this tutorial I can make it uncomplicated. Now I want to move on to the factory pattern. I'm going to simplify everything in this. Everything's just going to be pictures, but eventually I'm going to get into the code. With a factory pattern, you basically have your application, which is this alien right here, and it's going to say make a UFO. Then you use what is called a factory, and in a minute here I'm going to show you all the code behind all these little nice looking pictures. This factory, based off of input from the alien over here, is either going to shoot out a UFO, a rocket, or a boss UFO in this situation. The factory then shoots out abstract classes that have name, speed, and damage, and then these abstract classes are then used to create a final product. So as you can see here, there are no concrete classes because all of that is abstracted out. So these guys here can literally be just about anything as long as they define a name, speed, and damage, which is what these abstract classes do. So that is the basics of a factory pattern. Now let's go back and let's look at the code and explain this further. So here is the factory pattern. If you can't see this, don't worry about it. I'm going to zoom in on everything. And basically you can see here the little alien is asking for a UFO. The factory is putting a check mark in the UFO box. It's spitting out an abstract class. And then those abstract classes are going to create one or another of these different ships. So let's zoom in here and see exactly what's going on with our main application. And we know this is the main application because it has public static void main where everything's going to be running inside of here. And basically all this guy does is it asks for input from the user to either enter a U, an R, or a B. It's then going to take that information and pass it to the factory and make a ship. And in this situation, type of ship is either going to be a U, an R, or a B. So it's going to pass that over to my factory. And here is the factory itself. So let's zoom in and see what that looks like. And there you go. And then the factory is going to say, did they give us a U? If they did, we're going to have to return a UFO enemy ship, which is going to be an abstract class. Or they entered an R, which we're going to return a rocket abstract class. Or a B, a big UFO enemy abstract class. So everything's abstracted out. And if we zoom in on this abstract class, you can just see right here that if they want to create an enemy ship, they're going to have to define a name, speed, and damage. And all these other different methods underneath of here are going to be created later on inside the ships themselves. And then finally, we get into the ships itself. And you can see here are two ships, big UFO enemy ship and UFO enemy ship. And they both extend enemy ship right here. And you can see they come in and provide a name as well as a damage and a speed. And there you go. Those are your final objects and they're all ready for you to use. So now let's look and see how a factory pattern differs from an abstract factory pattern. In this situation, remember, we're going to abstract everything out. Even the ordering process is going to be abstracted out. So whenever our alien says, I want to make a UFO or I want you to make me one, just act like there's a salesman in here. Now, the salesman's only job is to take the order. He doesn't care about any of the specifics of the ship. He just wants the sale, quite literally. So what he is going to do then, and this is sort of a middleman, is define a generic ordering form. And basically, this is going to be an abstract class. And the only requirement that this abstract class has is that it contain a method called make enemy ship. All right, so now let's get more specific. 
Now make enemy ship, which is our generic ordering form, is then going to define the different types of UFOs that can be built. You can look upon this as a more specific ordering form. And this guy is going to define a UFO and attach it to the to be built UFO. And it's also going to give the UFOs a name. Don't worry about it. I'm going to show you the code here in a second. Just want you to understand the process of what's going on. And then we are going to define the classes that implement the interface. And here, basically, what we're going to define is everything that every UFO must be able to do to be considered a UFO, which means it needs to contain a weapon as well as an engine. So from this interface that we create here, we are then going to create factories. Now, this can sometimes confuse people. Just think about it this way. Each factory that we're going to define is only going to be able to create one type of gun and one type of engine. However, it could also create a missile in this situation. All of these things could be built, or all of these factories could be built from this one abstract class. Just continue to think of these as order forms or blueprints for what needs to come next. So basically what we're saying here is whenever you build these factories, they must be able to make a gun and an engine, or they could also make a missile. And what we're doing here is defining what factory makes each specific type of UFO. Remember, we're abstracting out everything. We want to be able to use everything in its most generic form. Then, from that point on, we have our specific factories, and they are going to output generic ships. Again, we want to encapsulate everything so that we can look at everything as if it is a ship. Well, basically, what we're saying here is every enemy ship that is ever going to be created in this instance is going to have a name, weapon, and engine. And that's it. They don't know what type of name, weapon, or engine, but we do know that we need those things. And basically what we're defining here from the factory, real simple, is we're saying this is the blueprint for making an enemy ship. And then this blueprint is going to be used to make very specific ships. And you can see right here, that's exactly what it's going to do. This interface that is demanding that every ship have a name, weapon, and engine is then going to be able to be implemented to create actual ships. And what this allows us to do, again, is to take advantage of polymorphism, where we can refer to every object that we're going to be playing with as an enemy ship, and just say, hey, enemy ship, go over there. And it doesn't matter what type of enemy ship, just whichever one we point at is going to do whatever we want it to do. And then, further on, each of the parts of this enemy ship can then be defined inside of an abstract pattern. Again, you are just defining the specifics of the ship, just like we were defining the specifics of what a factory can do. And each of these ships is going to be made up of a series of parts. And what this is going to allow us to do is to, like I said before, use composition or have fields inside of our spaceship object be objects in the situations that are weapons and engines. So let's look at this in a code-related way. And there you have the whole entire abstract class, and all the code avail is available underneath this video. So let's zoom in here. Okay, so we have our little alien coming in here and saying, hey, I want you to make me a ship. Well, enemy ship building is going to handle orders for new enemy ships, and you're going to be able to send it code using the order the ship method, and it's basically just going to send the order to the right factory for the creation of said ship. That is what it's going to do. And then here we are defining a basic enemy ship, and we're giving them names, and then make UFOs, which is enemy ship building, which I'm going to show you in a second. We're going to pass over the string UFO, and in this situation, the string UFO boss. So now let's take a look at this abstract class we have here. And there you can see enemy ship building. And what is it going to do? Well, it's an abstract class that's going to demand that any real orders, specific order forms, are going to be able to make an enemy ship and string type of ship. That is going to be either UFO or boss UFO. As you can see right here, UFO, UFO boss. So that string is going to be passed inside of there. And this is going to act as an order mechanism for creating enemy ships that have a weapon, engine, and name, and nothing else, as you're going to see here in a little bit. And those specific parts used for engine and weapon depend upon the string that is going to be passed, which is this string right here, type of ship. And then these methods after the ship is created are all going to run down here, make ship, display enemy ship, and just basically just shoot information out onto the screen. So this is the abstract order form. So now let's look at the very specific order form for our different types of ships. And I'm going to focus in in this situation on just UFO enemy ship building because we could have multiple very specific order forms, but in this situation, I'm just going to focus on one. 
Now this is going to be the only class that ever needs to be changed whenever you want to put new ships inside of here. And then if we zoom down right here, if UFO was sent, what we're telling it to do is grab the factory that knows what type of weapons and engines a regular UFO needs. And then the enemy ship object is returned and given a name, like you see right there. And then in this situation down here, we're going to do exactly the same thing. It's going to make sure that the right factory is used so that we're able to pop out UFO bosses rather than regular UFOs. And now we get into the abstract class for our factory. And here, using this interface, enemy ship factory, you're going to be able to build ships along with all of the components for those ships. And right over here, you're going to define the parts that are required. If an object wants to be an enemy ship, just like we do with all interfaces, we're just going to force them to implement these methods. And then if you come over here, this factory is going to use the enemy ship factory interface to create very specific UFO enemy ship parts or methods in this situation. And this is where we're going to define all the parts the ship will use by defining the methods implemented right here using ES weapon or enemy ship weapon and enemy ship engine. So now that we have created our factory, they are then going to pop out different types of abstract enemy ship classes. So let's take a look at that. And here again, you're going to see an abstract class for enemy ship, and it's going to have a name, a weapon, and an engine. And then all this other stuff is just basic. And then this abstract class is going to force, because we have abstract here, for every ship that is going to be defined to have the method called make ship. And then finally, you can see here I implemented the two string method here. And that's just going to allow me to, inside of a system out print line, for example, say to print out an enemy ship that is going to use this abstract class. And it's just going to output all this information in regards to that said ship. So now let's look at those ships that use this abstract class. And here they are. And you're going to see extends enemy ship. And it's going to create a copy of ship factory that it's going to hold for it here. And you can see down here, it's going to be very easy to just swap in different types of guns and engines depending upon the ship factory. So now let's look at how we're going to accumulate or attach parts to this spaceship. And you can see right here, that's exactly what we're going to do. We have ES weapon, which is doing nothing more than an interface that is going to force every weapon to implement the two string method and an interface ES engine, which is also only going to force each object that uses this interface to also implement two string. And then whenever the actual gun itself, the, the object that is created from this class is called, it is just simply going to return 20 damage and 1000 miles per hour. And what's really cool about this is that any part that implements the interface ES weapon is easily going to be able to replace that part in any ship. So it provides flexibility on a level that is almost incomprehensible. And I think you can kind of see here exactly how you can use the abstract factory pattern to implement pretty much anything you could ever want to do in regards to simulation. So that is both a review of the factory pattern as well as a look at the abstract factory pattern. All of the code is available underneath the video. If you have any questions, it's probably answered down there because it is heavily commented. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.